Howard Stern. In this day and age, people are so hypersensitive to what's online. I'm sure everybody's heard of people like Fresh and Fit and Kevin Samuels and Andrew Tate, and people think this is the most extreme people that you'll ever find online. Well, uh, Nige is way more savage than that. I know I'm a big woman, so yeah. what? So I was guessing your weight, and I was gonna say to you today, can you please get on the scale, and then we'll have an over-under, that's all? No. Why not, why not? I'm not gonna get on a scale if you gotta weigh me. What's up, guys? It's Bad Decisions, where we watch people make bad decisions. What's It's your boy, Jim. So, Howard Stern, just in case you're unaware, Howard Stern was a famous shock jock. He started in the 1980s, and now he's still his show is still going on, but I think he's, he's, he's on, like, Sirius XM. But basically, this guy just says a bunch of wild, crazy stuff. All right, so what do you think of, uh, about Howard Stern? Uh, I watched Howard Stern when I was a kid. I don't know if I was a kid. I was young. I watched Howard Stern. There was a lot of... Um, uh, risque things that went on on the show he would just ask them to show their bodies and they would show their bodies they had segments where women would ride certain toys that are for adults and um all kinds of crazy stuff yeah it was, it was a crazy show they did some wild and it wasn't just women either they did some like they made fun of women they made fun of men they made fun of people that had special needs they made fun of um bro he went in on eminem did you see what he said <laughs> to eminem you got left because your dad dumped you when you were a baby right yeah and never like supported the family or anything yeah man. just like a black guy you know i always read about oh. black inner city guys who always dumping their families yeah. your mom was always probably depressed because she couldn't get you out of the black neighborhood because your dad left and, and never sent any child support honestly like i wrote my father like three letters right. when i was little yeah i mean he definitely was savage well so why are you so blown away by that one because you were shocked that he's made fun of uh, black people I, yeah, I am. No, he. That well, was that I mean, was part I mean, of his thing. Yeah, he's got no, he's got no bar. No, he, that was his thing. He made fun of everybody. He was the equal opportunist. No, he's definitely equal opportunist roaster. He went he went in on everybody, mm -hmm. as as I can clearly see. I just think it's funny about how people are so hypersensitive about things now. Oh yeah. And I'm not saying that I condone everything that comes out now, but like people are like cancel that person. Um, he says he doesn't like this, like. Cancel Target, cancel this, cancel this. And I'm like, bro, people back in the day was like way worse. Oh, for sure. Way worse. Way worse. A lot of things that flew that, that was okay back in the day. I shouldn't say okay. A lot of things that people got away with back in the day, they yeah. would never. A lot of comedians are saying they wouldn't even come out. Like this old comedian's like, why don't you come and do the special? And they're like, I can't put a special out right now. If I put a special <clears throat> out right now, that'd be the end of my career. That's what Steve Harvey said. I yeah, I mean, and I and I don't blame him because listen, there like there are certain movies that can't even come out now, like White oh, Chicks. Yeah, no, White Chicks. There's no like, White Chicks. There's no way they'd ever be able to come out with like a sequel now. Her mother is so dumb. She went to Dr. Dre for a Pap smear. Oh, something's wrong, Dr. Dre. My coochie's doing a beatbox. <laughs> Your mother's ass is so hairy. It looks like Don King's about to pop out and say, "Woman in America." <laughs> Your mother's so old that her breast milk is powdered. You breastfeed like this. If they would, it'd be so watered down to the point where it wouldn't even be like white chicks. The crazy thing about to me about cancel culture is that it's almost like ignoring something that you know is there because you don't want to deal with it. Like, let's say we go on, on the street and we interview someone about their opinion on um, what's going on with Target right now. Yeah. They're not going to give you their real opinion on, on the camera because they're afraid to get canceled. But once the camera is turned off, it's camera off. Okay, so what I really <laughs> think is blah, blah, blah. And it's like, so what's the point? We all know that 90% of people, I mean think a certain way not to say that they don't like certain people it's just that they don't necessarily agree with all the things that are happening exactly they're just afraid to say it and is that the kind of world we want to live in where people are afraid to say no. things no because listen i agree with not being outwardly rude mm -hmm. i agree with with having respect for people mm -hmm. but i think there's a there's a line right and i think we're living a we're living in a line where it's like it's so unrealistic is like you know that people don't agree with this and instead of them saying something they're just like Oh yeah, so I com completely agree. Like whistling around, I can't. I can't whistle. That's why I'm not whistling. But like, you know, like, oh, I completely agree with this. And and they're looking around. But at the end of the day, it's like, dude, I I know you don't agree with this. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like you could just be honest about it. So my thing is that people are. It's okay to agree to disagree, right? If I'm in a situation, I don't agree with what you said. Cool, fine, not a big deal. But now it's like. <gasps> Oh my gosh, like, oh, he said this, he said that. And the first thing that they do is they give you a shaming name. They're like, oh, this person is a racist. This person is a, a, 
They'll say this person's a misogynist. This person is a like. I mean, they shame people on everything, man. Howard Stern was controversial even in the '90s. Yeah. So it was not as if people weren't offended by what he said, or they thought that his show wasn't like inappropriate. It's just that he wasn't canceled for it. I think yeah. the issue is that people are allowed to say what they want. I think there was a the reason that the First Amendment, First Amendment, was put first. I think Dave Chappelle said it. I, I can't remember exactly what he said. The First Amendment is first for a reason. The Second Amendment. It's just in case the first one doesn't work out. <laughs> but something about along the lines of the First Amendment being there for some reason and the Second Amendment being right behind it, just in case, you know, <laughs> some things got a hand or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that makes, you know, I, I see where he's going there. So, I, I mean, if Howard Stern was like in his prime today. No, way. he, he wouldn't he, even be. He, but yeah, bro. He wouldn't be a thing. He wouldn't get past show like three. No, he wouldn't. He would. Like, oh, he'd be no, taking no, off no. of Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, like. Every single outlet. Man, there'd be news articles when they cancel him. He's, he'd be on Pierce Morgan, like. It's kind of weird. Like, would it, you rather have someone say something behind your back or to your face? I'd rather be to my face. So it's like, if you know. Like, all these 1% people. When I say 1% people, I'm talking about the people that push things, that push a narrative, that force it on people. Yeah. Right? Because they're the minority of people that think a certain way. But my thing is this, though. This is the thing that always, like, makes me laugh so hard, is the people who are the most hypersensitive, like, if you get them behind closed doors, they're savage as hell. Like, they will say, they will say the most savage thing. Like, I know someone who's, like, extremely, like, well, I mean super duper, like, on the liberal side, like, blue hair, all this crazy stuff like this. They they fighting for rights on everything. Animals, you know, everything. They, they fight for rights on everything. But when it comes to, like, people, they're savage as hell. They will say the most, like, craziest thing. And I'm looking at them, I'm like, oh, well, I thought you were, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I thought you were a little free the pe- you know what I'm saying? Free everybody, and then all of a sudden, you savage as hell. But uh, one thing I was definitely going to say is that, like, in this modern day and age, that we don't really have a whole lot of shock jocks now. Like, the last one that I can think of was, like, Charlemagne the God. He was, like, the last person that was, like, a super-duper shock jock in radio. And now he's kind of, I mean, he's definitely, like, watered down now. If we're being real, he's watered down. He sold out, um, so to speak. But, I mean, academics is is, is the, but even, acad- I, don't, I don't know, like, he, I, listen, I, I like academics, Sometimes he does go a little bit too far, but I don't necessarily know if he's a shock jock. Oh, by the way, I was going to say Corey Holcomb. Anyway, regardless, though, um, ultimately, man, Howard Stern is the original savage. I don't care what you heard. I think it's funny how Gen Z is just not fit. I mean, the title of the video on, like, World Star was Gen Z didn't know about him or something. I think it's hilarious because now it makes me feel (laughs) old. Because it's it's weird to think about things. I don't think about it sometimes. I'm like, okay, some stuff to me is, is just like, okay. That was a thing, and no longer is it a thing, and that's whatever. Yeah. But I forget sometimes that things that were a thing that aren't a thing anymore, Gen Z might have no idea what it is. That Because we were, yeah. as 90s kids, we were, like, on the cusp of a lot of things, too, that are now just gone. Like, I remember I remember walking through Blockbuster. That was fun to me. We go through no, Blockbuster. No, I used to love Blockbuster, Yeah, man. Hollywood video. You no, go no, through no. the videos. Blockbuster, yeah. listen, my aunt used to come down. She was, like, in college when I was a kid. Mm. She would come down, and she's like, all right, let's... Let's go to Blockbuster. Blockbuster, man, you had the candy in the front. You had the video game section. Oh, you man. had, like, the new release section that was right here. Yeah. And, like, that's why I'm saying, bro. Good like, times, good times. So, any final words on this? Any final words? Stop being sensitive, man. It's yeah. okay to laugh sometimes. It's all right. Like, it's weird. Now, I find myself going back and watching old movies because I actually want a genuine laugh mm. and not, like, be worried about, like, all the messaging that's in these movies now and all the virtue signaling mm. and like all the woke stuff. I'm like, dude, I just want to enjoy a movie. Movie's supposed to be an escapism, bro. You know what I'm saying? I get it if it's like a biopic or, you know, like one movie that actually has like a message in it. But, you know, majority of like dumb slapstick movies don't need to have serious. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys. Nonetheless, this has been Bad Decisions. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you guys want us to review next. So we are out.